Okay, if you saw the title, it said, I am a worm and not a man. That is a verse that comes out of the uh, book of Psalms, chapter 22. If y'all want to go there, if you got your Bible, chapter 22, verse 6, it says, But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. Check this out. He says right here, but I am a worm and not a man. Psalm 22, right? Okay. I'm going to show, read you a little bit more. I'm not going to read the whole Psalms because it's going to take forever. But Psalms 22, they call it the Psalm of the Cross because it's a prophetic Psalm that talks about Jesus. This particular Psalm in the Bible it, it is prophetic about Jesus Christ. But here's the thing. David wrote this psalm a thousand years, over 900 and something years, a whole millennium before Jesus was ever born. We know he lived forever in the spirit, but before he was born in the flesh, David wrote this psalm. And this psalm was speaking prophetically about Jesus. Let me show you a couple of verses. In the first verse, Psalm 22, verse 1, he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, who remembers what Jesus said when he was on the cross? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, right? What up, Travis? I think Travis and Lisa are the one that shared this with me, uh, talking about the scarlet worm. I'm about to get into it, though, man. So what did God say? In the, uh, what did Jesus say on the cross? He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, right? And so Psalm 22 says that. So we already know he, he's going to talk about Jesus. He said in Hebrew, Eloi, Eloi, Lam. Lama Sabakni Samba Sabaktani Eloi Eloi Lama Sabaktani That's what Jesus said on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right? Okay, in verse 14, look what he said. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. When they pierced Jesus, what poured out of his body? Blood and water. Right? What's up, man of God? I love you, bro. Right? So that's another reference towards Jesus. Look at verse 16. He says, Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircle me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. All of my bones are on display. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Why would David say that? They never pierced David's hands. They never pierced David's feet. See, he was being inspired by the Holy Spirit that was speaking through him prophetically about the Messiah, about the Christ that would come a thousand years, a thousand years before he ever lived on this earth. David was writing about this. And the last one, verse uh, 18, he says, they divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. What was he talking about? Right? That was what the Bible tells us in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that they did to Jesus when he was hanging up there on the cross. They pierced his hands, they pierced his feet, and the soldiers took his clothes and they cast lots and they divided it amongst itself. So Psalms 22 is a prophetic psalm. And there were a few of them. Isaiah 53 is another one. A lot of the Old Testament chapters are prophetic chapters about the Savior that would come. All right. So now that we know that, let me get into what I'm trying to say. Verse 6, he says, But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. And, st and somebody asked me this weekend, why do you think he said that? And the first thought is, uh, he's saying, I am a worm and not a man, because in the eyes of people, they didn't even consider Jesus like he was nothing. They didn't even consider him a man. They didn't even consider him a human being, how they treated him. They treated him worse than they would treat a dog. They spit on him. They pulled his beard out. You know, they he was a reproach among the people. You know, when you think about a worm, they're nasty. They're slimy. They're disgusting. Like, ugh, there's no purpose except to put it on a hook, catch a fish, right? That's what Jesus did, right? The cross was the hook. He was a fisher of men, right? But he said, I am a worm and not a man. In other words, these people just have brought me down so low in their eyes and in their hearts that I'm not even considered a man. But I want to show you something deep. You ready? That word in Hebrew, when he says, but I am a worm and not a man, that word that he uses is Taulat. Taulat. T-O-W-L-A-T. Taulat. I might be saying it wrong. Tolat. Tola. Right? 
Now here's the thing The normal word that they would use When they were talking about a worm Would be the word Hema Right But in this particular psalm They use the word Tala Although the, the, the regular Hebrew word Is Rima R-I-M-M-A-H Rima But in this one they use Tala Why would they use this particular Word for worm well, if you look up in the Hebrew definition of what that is, it's specifically talking about a scarlet worm. Mm. So when he was saying this in the songs, but I am a worm and not a man, he was saying, I am a scarlet worm and not a man. In Israel, there's a worm. It's called a scarlet worm. They call it a scarlet worm because of its color. It's a crimson red. It's a scarlet red color. Now watch this. When the female worm is ready to have babies, she attaches herself to a wooden fence post or a wooden stick or a, uh, a stump of a tree, right? She attaches herself to a piece of wood and she becomes permanently attached to this piece of wood and she lays eggs, right? She lays eggs under herself, right? But she makes her body become like a hard shell. She makes her body become like a hard shell to protect the babies that she just gave birth to. And the mother is permanently attached to this piece of wood so that the only way to get her off or to remove herself is for her to tear her body. She does this so that she can protect her eggs that are underneath her, right? Okay. Then it says, when the baby worms hatch, the baby worms stay alive under the mother's protective shell, right? For three days. And not only does the mama shell provide protection, but it also provides food because for three days, the baby worms feed off of their living mother. Mother, They literally are eating their living mother. She sacrifices her life to cover her babies right and they feed off of their mother's living body so that they can grow and it says after a few days when the young worms grow to the point that they are able to take care of themselves the mother dies and as the crimson worm dies she excretes she oozes a red crimson or scarlet red dye that stains the wood where she was attached to, but it also stains her children, the baby worms that are under her, so that they are permanently, for the rest of their life, colored scarlet red. Man, right? And then it says, after the three days, the dead mother's crimson, the dead mother's uh, body loses its crimson color and it turns into a white wax, which falls to the ground. Now, here's the thing. Jesus referenced this worm. Psalms 22 referenced this worm when he said, but I am a worm and not a man. It was not by accident that he specifically named this. Jesus was familiar with Israel. He was familiar with the animals. He was familiar with the insects. He was familiar with nature. He always compared things. Look at the birds. Look at the animals. Look at, look at the trees, right? So, and, and they said in Israel, they had used these worms that would crush up the shells and they would use it to make a red dye to dye the garments, right? What up, bro, Tommy? I'm sharing it, man. So this is just mind blowing because if you think about it, the worm attached itself permanently to the cross. Jesus, they said he considered, they considered him a worm. I mean, the worm attached itself permanently to a piece of wood. Jesus was the one that they said they considered him a worm and he permanently attached his body to the cross. When the, when the mother worm died, she stained the piece of wood crimson red. When Jesus was pierced through his hands and his feet and his side, he stained the wooden cross crimson red with the blood that was poured out of him. Then it says... That when she excretes that crimson color red, it stains her children for the rest of their life. They are colored red. When we come to Jesus and we are reborn in the spirit, 
He covers us with his blood and we are for the rest of our lives covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible, it, it, then it says that the babies stay in their mamas under her mama's protective shelf for three days. Jesus was in the ground for three days. And it says that the babies feed off of her living body. Hmm. We literally feed off of the living body of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in the scriptures in, in the book of John chapter 6 verse 53 He says I tell you the truth unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood You cannot have eternal life. So in order for those babies to have life They have to eat their mama in order for us to have eternal life We have to drink the blood of Jesus and eat the flesh of Jesus Christ Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, Jesus, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. What does that mean? We have to believe upon Jesus. We have to daily get in his word, which is the living word, where he is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So we have to eat the word. We are literally eating Jesus. We are partaking of his body when we take communion, when we, when we are reading the word. We are partaking of the body of Christ and we are drinking his blood every time we claim the blood of Jesus Christ as our the savior of our sin, uh, the savior of our sin. Yes, Mike, that's a that's a, a, a metaphor. So if you go back and watch the beginning of the video, bro, I promise you it's awesome, man. So Jesus said in Psalm 22, verse six, he said, but I am a worm and not a man. We know that God takes everything that the devil meant for bad and he turns it for good, right? They thought it was bad. They, they meant it bad by calling Jesus a worm. But they were declaring what he would one day do on the cross. He was per the, the mother worm permanently attaches herself to that piece of wood so that the only way she comes off of that is if she dies. Jesus attached himself to that cross and the only way he came off of that wooden cross was covered in blood and when his body was dead so that we could have eternal life. Isn't that beautiful? Everything Jesus did was prophetic. The Old Testament scriptures, the New Testament scriptures, I was reading something today and Jesus was talking to the Pharisees because they thought that they could have life without Jesus. We know the word. We got the words of Abraham and Moses. And Jesus tell them, you, you, he says in ver, uh, John 5 verse 39, he says, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. He said, but the scriptures testify of me. He said, you think that you can have life without Jesus by reading his word. I believe in God. I don't need to believe in Jesus. He said, you search the scriptures because you think that in the scriptures you have eternal life, but you don't know that they testify of me. Every scripture that you read, he was telling them all the Old Testament, the Moses, the Abraham, the writings of David. He said, they all testify of me. And it's beautiful when we find little nuggets like this because it really does testify of Jesus. Everything points back to the cross. The scriptures are alive. They are literally testifying about Jesus. Man, it's so beautiful. The Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms, the Proverbs, they all are bearing witness of Jesus.